So, when we meditate regularly, we are affecting not only ourselves, but our environment. Uh, now, I don't know if I mentioned to you the hundredth monkey effect, which was an experiment which they did in the Japanese islands, in which they, some, they were giving monkeys potatoes. The monkeys liked the potatoes. They were dropping them for the monkeys. Uh, but uh, there was sand on the potatoes. One young monkey learned that he could wash the potato in the river and then eat it without the sand. And then as the years passed, other young monkeys learned from this monkey. And later, some of the parents of those younger monkeys which learned to wash the potatoes. And then one day after five years, it took five years for this gradually, for the critical mass to build up, suddenly all the monkeys started washing the potatoes, and even monkeys on a nearby island. I don't think they had telephone in those days for the monkeys to <laughs> communicate. So uh, this is in one way of thinking that this may be explained by the critical mass concept, that we have a causal body which is a pool of knowledge and traits and abilities of the species. Uh, another experiment was they taught people certain poems, and then they tr went to another part of the world and taught them the same poem, and these people in the other part of the world were able to learn it more quickly. The idea being that this poem was being installed, if you like, in the causal memory, in the collective memory, collective memory so that it became easier in the same way, we may find that in our Monique Isuri here, that every group that comes perhaps finds it easier to understand the material that we're giving. Not because they had contact with it before, but because this material has now been processed by 5,000 people in the Athens area. Okay. So this is a concept which is hopefully true, hopefully for us. Of course, this is not the only way that we can affect society in a positive way. We affect society by our words, by our means of communication, and of course, by our actions. And the hope is that once a person becomes more attuned to his inner self, that his actions will be more selfless uh, and more in, in, in harmony with what society around him needs. I'd like to speak, however, about seven specific results of daily meditation which, uh, having an effect on the individual, will also have an effect on the whole. The first problem that I'd like to talk about in society is the problem of confusion. That many people are confused because they have uh, too many conflicting messages in their minds. You know, they're getting one message from the church, another message from television, another message from the politicians, another message from their parents, another message from the teachers. And we live in a world in which there are many conflicting concepts and beliefs. <clears throat> the result is that most people don't stop to think about what they really believe. And they're just this mixture, this combination of programmings which have gone into the subconscious mind from parents, from teachers, from television, from all the other media. Uh, this causes people uh, to be less effective in their lives. This confusion undermines people's health and undermines their concentration and their clarity of mind. So that we have whatever role a person is in, he's not able to, to fulfill that role, to perform that role in a very effective or positive way, whether it be a religious leader or a political leader or a teacher at school or a parent bringing up the children. There is so much confusion and uh, false, I would say, value system, wrong value systems in these people's minds, that they are unable to really help the people that they are supposedly in a position to help. 
I mean, this could be true of every profession, of doctors, of lawyers, of politicians, of uh, spiritual leaders. Uh, those who are leading themselves have not, have, have no clarity yet. A second aspect is that this also means that there's a lack of inner direction, that people lacking this inner voice are unable to know themselves what they need, what they want out of life. So meditation is a process in which we allow these programmings to subside, allow these small voices which are in the mind to begin to relax so that we can experience what we believe, what is true for us, our true value system, our values, not our parents' values, not the television's values, not the magazine's values, not the politician's values, and not even the religion's values, because even there things are confusing often. I'm not saying that a meditator rejects any of this. He doesn't reject anything. He looks at it, he works on it, and says, do I believe this? Is this true for me? Does, life, does my life experiences say this is true for me? And if it is, yes. He doesn't, he's not a rebel. He's not against anything. But he just thinks. And in that state of meditation, allowing everything to dissolve, we come in contact with an inner voice. And this inner voice allows us to begin to live our lives according to what we really believe, what is really truthful for us. Mm -hmm.